you cookies. Maybe didn't think that one through. You can't have them because you're through a screen. I guess instead of stuffing your face, you'll have to stuff your brain with knowledge because it's the know-it-all. Your dose of the biggest gaming and entertainment news. Shut up, I like it. <laughs> I didn't say anything. <laughs> I I'm actually a... have already ruined like three of these takes because I keep eating pieces of cookie and not being able to get through. <laughs> I didn't think it through. I panicked. I'm Meg Turney. As for every week, we'll tell you all the biggest stuff that happened this week and you can click the link to go to the full update. And uh, there was so much news this week from the PlayStation experience. We're going to start off with all of our gaming news. Yeah. <laughs> Earlier this week, the dates leaked for the Steam Winter Sale. Once again, thank you, PayPal. The sale will begin on December 18th and continue through the holidays to January 2nd. If you don't want to wait, of course, GOG and Humble Bundle are both running their sales now. GOG's continues until the 15th and Humble Bundle's goes on until the 22nd. If, however, it's a matter of boredom and you, like me, are kind of a sucker for Valve's gamification that's occasionally opaque and confusing, good news! The Steam Holiday Auction kicked off yesterday. Bad news! It was almost immediately cancelled. A glitch that allowed some users to duplicate gems led to an immediately destroyed Steam economy, resulting in billions of counterfeit gems. Valve has since pulled the auction down, deleted all the gems, and begun banning users who fucked it up for everyone. This is still developing, but we'll have a full update on the know as we get more details. All glory to Arstotska! Favors, please. The 2013 indie hit that lets you play a Border Patrol agent is finally making its way to the iPad. The game's creator, Lucas Pope, tweeted out the announcement via cheeky photo and also shared that the game had had some troubles getting approved by Apple after they rejected the new body scanner function as being pornographic. Boo. Pope did say he's considering appealing the decision in the future, but accepted it for now so that the game's release wouldn't be delayed. It's available starting today for $5.99, but the price jumps up to $7.99 after the weekend, so if you're interested, get it today. Seriously, it's a fun game. You're not going to want to put it down. I'd ask Gus to back me up on this one, but I think he's locked in his office playing it right now. Low stamp of those papers. Getting into the holiday spirit, sort of, Microsoft has released a holiday-themed mashup hack for the console versions of Minecraft. Well, I say console. Actually, it's Xbox 360 and Xbox One right now, but unlike the Star Wars skin pack, it is coming to other platforms, so everyone can be jolly and festive as long as you're willing to pay $2.99 since the pack's not exactly free. The mashup contains a festive texture pack, 36 skins, and holiday music from Minecraft composer C418. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> a new server-side update for Halo the Master Chief Collection has brought with it the return of SWAT as the featured playlist. Whee! There have also been tweaks to team sizes in Team Slayer, Halo 2 Classic, Halo 3, Halo Championship Series, and SWAT, and the max party size for Big Team Battle has been pulled down to 4 to 6 as 343 addresses issues with parties of 8. Now once that's all cleared up, Big Team Battle will go back to being 8 players. There's a link to the full patch notes in the full update, but can I just say, SWAT is amazing and I love it, and you can argue with me about why you hate it in the comments. The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt has been delayed again. <sighs> this time, I'm so looking forward to it. CD Projekt Red posted an open letter to their fans apologizing for setting the release date too hastily and asked for forgiveness and trust moving forward. The main cause of the delay appears to be minor polishing issues and in a world where games are being torn apart left and right for having big issues right after launch, it makes a lot of sense they'd want to make sure everything's perfect before this one hits store shelves. You'll now be sick on May 19th, 2015. Nintendo has stirred up a bit of controversy this week after a Canadian game store tweeted that they were discontinuing the Marth, Wii Fit Trainer, and Villager Amiibos. Nintendo didn't really outright deny that this was the case and actually gave kind of this passive confirmation by saying that some Amiibos would not be replenished after their initial sell-through due to shelf space limitations. Lame excuse. They then clarified that those amiibo that become unavailable may be replenished at a later date, the keyword there being may. However, today GameStop confirmed that Marth, Wii Fit Trainer, and Villager were being discontinued by Nintendo, citing an internal communication they received from Nintendo. You lied. You got outed. <laughs> in other amiibo news, it's not just the discontinued figures that are bringing in the money. Defective amiibos are also selling for insane amounts on eBay. Just this week, a legless Princess Peach brought in more than $20,000. It seems like pretty much anything is going for 20 grand these days. There's a Doritos in my Fritos. What? Oh my god. I'll give you $100 for it. Are you one of those idiots that buys obscure and broken items for absurd prices? Yeah, uh, $200! You make me sick. No, no, please. Ah, what a waste. 
Oh, my Master Chief toy's pink and his arm is missing. What? I'll give you five thousand dollars for it. His arm is broken. Six thousand. Don't you have better things to spend your money on? No. Just give me, please, Link. Please, come on, please. <sighs> It's not Coke. Uh, $10,000. I'll, I'll give you $15,000. Uh, 25 dollars I $25,000. I just said that. $30,000. $50,000. $100,000. Sold. Yes. I don't actually have money. What? Well, how do you give it? No, give it back. Give it back. Give it. Tons of new announcements came out of the PlayStation Experience event last weekend, including the first gameplay demo for Uncharted 4, which looks amazing, new looks at No Man's Sky, even though we still don't know how to play that one, and Capcom also revealed that uh, Street Fighter V PS4 and PSC exclusive they accidentally leaked on Friday. Oops. A ton of new titles and ports were also announced with a heavy focus on indie games. God of War creator David Jaffe announced his new project, Drawn to Death. A new game called Wadham is coming from some of the brains that made Journey and Katamari Damacy. Fat Princess Adventures was announced as a four-player co-op title. What Remains of Edith Finch is coming from Giant Sparrow. Indie gunfight dungeon crawler Enter the Gungeon was revealed, as was procedurally generated Sky Torn and several more. There's a lot. Titles newly making their appearance on PS4 and Vita include Super Time Force, Towerfall Ascension, The Banner Saga, Bastion, Shovel Knight, Octodad Deadliest Catch, and more. And there's a ton of, of news, so we just put it all in one big wrap-up update. You can check out in the annotation if you want to catch everything. That is like you have you need to go to the clinic. Wink. Right. PlayStation UK boss Furl Gar. <laughs> PlayStation UK boss Fergal Gara has relayed his displeasure at the rather disastrous launch of PS4 title Drive Club. He said that both PlayStation and developer Evolution Studios are embarrassed by the server issues that have plagued the title since it came out in October. He went on to say that the game is mostly complete now. It's been out for more than two months. It should be more than mostly complete. But I digress. There's still no set release date for the PlayStation Plus launch of the game, which was supposed to happen in October. Gara says they're holding off until they're sure their servers can handle it. Of course, you only have to worry about server load if people still care, according to one of our commenters in a nice zinger. It's the end of an era. Ralph Baer, the inventor and creator of the first home gaming console, has passed away at the age of 92. Baer, a lifelong tinkerer in super cool stuff, began creating his first console prototype called the Brown Box in 1966 and had a working prototype by 1968. He would later license it to Magnavox to be released as the Odyssey. He went on to work with Magnavox and Coleco on their future consoles, create the pattern matching game Simon, and in total hold 150 patents in his name. Unknown to many, Pong was even a ripoff of his tennis game for the Odyssey, over which Magnavox successfully sued Atari for patent infringement, so there's a slice of history. You'll be missed, Bear. Thank you for everything. What's a moe girl to do when everyone and their mother seems to hate you? Lucky Chloe was the newly announced character for Tekken 7, with blonde hair, a cutesy cat-themed outfit, and all the makings of a Vocaloid idol, except that instead of inspiring love and happiness, she's found an awful lot of hate here in the West. After a NeoGAF thread bashing her character design was shared with the game's director, Kasuhiro Hirata, he lashed out on Twitter, threatening to replace her in the West with a new skinhead character, since that's what he knew Westerners would like. He went on to say that Chloe was exclusive to Europe and Asia, but after many fans decried this decision, he did say he was just joking about the skinhead and would consider bringing Chloe to the States. So, you know, fingers crossed we get Mew Mew in Tekken. You're gonna have some Destiny gamers were upset this week after it was revealed that the weekly Heroic Strike was part of the newly released DLC and therefore unavailable to those who haven't shelled out the 20 bucks for the Dark Below. Weekly Strikes are key to high-level players who need them strange coins to buy from Xur, the weekend-only vendor. It stands to reason that the strike will go back to being free-for-all next week since there's only one strike included in the DLC, but that didn't stop Guardians from being pissed. And speaking of pissed guardians, Ryan lets loose on Destiny this week on the patch. Again. We also compare notes on Tales from the Borderlands and Game of Thrones, and spoiler alert, by the end, Ryan admits to really liking Destiny. If esports are more your thing, check out the leaderboard where we discuss MLG getting into Dota 2 and the Intel Extreme Master Series this past weekend. Alright, now let's talk movies and TV. Yeah. 
Now that we've got the Star Wars Episode 7 teaser out of the way and the grumbling over that lightsaber is starting to subside, J.J. Abrams decided to reach out and give our hype another good yank by releasing the identities of the five characters shown in the teaser, killing off some rumors and starting entirely new ones. Daisy Ridley's character, rumored to be the daughter of Han and Leia, is named Rey, not the previously rumored Kira, while John Boyega is Finn, no last name for either of those two, keeping that mystery alive. Baldroid is officially BB-8, Oscar Isaac's X-Wing pilot is Poe Dameron, and the mysterious new Sith we think is Adam Driver is called Kylo Ren, or Kylo Ren, depending on who you ask. The announcement was made via a series of numbered trading cards hinting that the rest of the new cast and possibly the original may get their own share of reveals this way too. Those hackers who stole 100 terabytes of data from Sony Pictures last month and leaked several upcoming movies on illegal file sharing services have publicly made new demands of Sony. Now they're threatening Sony execs with dire consequences if the company goes ahead with the release of upcoming comedy The Interview starring Seth Rogen and James Franco. To accompany the demands, they have released more stolen information, including the social security numbers, addresses, and salaries of more than 40,000 current and previous employees of the company, plus emails between executives and traveling aliases of several celebrities. If you haven't read the emails, they're amazing. One of the reveals, thanks to the emails leaked by the hackers, is the news that, you guys, Marvel really cares about Civil War and they want to make it awesome. So much so that they actually approached Sony attempting to get rights back to Spider-Man for the next Captain America movie so he can take his place in the middle of the war. They even pitched Sony on letting Marvel Studios create a new Spider-Man trilogy for Sony. Unfortunately, those talks fell apart, though there are some, well, the kind of, you know, shaky but we want to believe them sort of rumors that Sony's parent company in Japan is pressuring them to work it out. Not a lot of grounding for it, but still, let's just, let's just hope. If Arrow, The Flash, Gotham, Constantine, and the in-development Supergirl and Teen Titan TV adaptations just aren't enough DC to keep you happy, then you'll be the guy shouting hooray at the announcement by DC and sci-fi that they're pulling a Gotham, sort of, with the Superman universe and developing a new TV show called Krypton focusing on, you guessed it, Superman's home planet. The TV show will be set in the years of Superman's grandfather as he rebuilds the disgraced House of L and pulls together a planet in disarray. We don't have any other details like who would play Grandpa L or who we could see on the show, but guys, are we overloaded with superhero shows or is it still awesome? So many. For a full hour of movie and TV discussion on topics just like that, make sure you check out our podcast, Screenplay. We watch Die Hard and I don't want to spoil anything, but this one definitely worth checking out. Next week, we'll be discussing the one I love. If you want to watch it before then, it's kind of like movie homework. It was so awesome to see it happen in studio. It was what happened. I don't it's know. Magic. It's magic. It's why working is great. All right, let's wrap up with the latest advancements in tech and science. All right, just one this week, guys, because there was so much happening in video games, but it's totally worth it. Researchers have developed synthetic skin that can actually sense touch like real skin. Made from a polymer with super thin layers of golden silicone, there are as many as 400 sensors per square millimeter that can detect pressure, moisture, heat, and texture. I mean, do people even have that high resolution in actual skin? It's crazy to think about. The proof of concept was tested on a rat brain, but because of the limited brain size, it was unable to determine which of the different types of senses it's receiving. So more advanced testing is gonna require bigger brains. Dr. Frankenstein, I believe you're being called. Obvious applications for this kind of thing are limb prosthetics, but they can offer actual high resolution sensory feedback, but I'm holding out for robot bodies. I really want a robot body. You are always holding out for robot bodies. <laughs> That's it for the know-it-all this week, folks. We'll be back at the same time next week to bring you another dose of the week's biggest news. In the meantime, remember to catch the Rooster Teeth podcast on Monday, Screenplay on Tuesday, The Patch on Wednesday, and On the Spot on Thursday. Oh, and um, next week we will be embarrassing ourselves in the Rooster Teeth Shape Up Olympics on the Rooster Teeth Twitch channel. So if you want to make fun of yoga pants or our debatable fitness abilities, we'll See you there. Peace. I'm gonna get yeah, in shape. I'm just to shape it up. I'm like, okay. Oh, 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 oh. So good. <laughs>